So what do we need to make our homemade mincemeat? Well, dried vine fruits, of course. In here, I have got equal quantities of sultanas, currants and raisins, and also some dried prunes. You can add um, any dried fruits that you really enjoy. In fact, I happen to have some prunes, so I chopped those up small and added those into my bowl. You could also add um, chopped up figs, dried apricots, uh, possibly dates, that would be really delicious, cranberries, whatever you enjoy and whatever you might have in your cupboards. I just wanted to show you, I haven't put all the currants in yet, but I do actually take a little time to clean my dried fruit, uh, that, well the vine fruits in any case, before adding them to the bowl. I just find that currants particularly actually, but also sultanas and raisins, often have little stalky bits attached to them and slightly sort of gritty, um, gritty pieces, which are just not something you really want to encounter in your, in your mincemeat. So um, I tip them out onto a tea towel and then I simply sort of rub them really in the tea towel, like so. And that just helps loosen any of those leftover stalks and they will be left on the tea towel. You won't get every last little gritty bit, but it does make a difference. And I think it's worth taking the time to do. It's not necessary, uh, but I do think if you're going to the trouble of making your own mincemeat, that it's worth taking a bit of time to just make it perfect. So you can probably see there on the tea towel, there are just a few quite a few actually little little bits of stalk and just gritty pieces. So I do think it's worth cleaning the fruit. Cleaning is a funny funny term to use. It's not really cleaning, but I can't think of a of a better better way of describing it really. So just give them a good a good rub on that tea towel and then add them into the bowl with the rest of the dried fruit. Now what else am I going to add? I'm going to add some dried mixed peel. I've got some just here and I am actually going to chop it up quite finely. Although it is already chopped, you, you can buy large pieces as well. Um, mine is already chopped. It's um, just sort of standard, standard pot of mixed peel. Um, I don't like to find big pieces of it in my mincemeat. So I'm actually going to sort of really mince it up so that I get the flavour, um, but without, you know, the sort of big chunks. But that is entirely up to you. If you if you really like mixed peel, then just put it in as it is. It, it doesn't really matter. So there we go. What else have I got? I'm going to be adding some lovely spices. I'm going to add cinnamon. I'm going to add some nutmeg and some mixed spice. All wonderful, warming Christmas spices that will give your mincemeat a really delicious flavour. And then I'm going to add some zest and juice of lemon. Uh, nice citrus flavour there. You could equally use orange if you prefer. And I'm going to add some apple as well, Bramley apple. I've got one very large Bramley apple. Let me just put that aside here, which I'm going to peel and then chop really uh, into very small dice and add that. You could, you could grate it also if you prefer. Um, if you've got smaller Bramley apples, you might want to use two. I have got sugar. I am using dark muscovado sugar. I love that treacly flavour and it gives the mincemeat a lovely deep colour as well. So um, that can just go straight into the bowl like so. I have also got suet here. Um, you can use vegetarian suet um, or beef suet, whichever you, you prefer. And that just goes in as well. Here are my spices. So really generous helping of those different spices there. So as I was saying, I am chopping up the mixed peel, just mincing it really, so it is very, very finely chopped. That is almost there now. That's just so I don't get big lumps in the mincemeat. Oops, there we go, I think that's fine. So that can go into, into the bowl. There we go. I have chopped the Bramley apple up into just really small, just small little dice there, so they can all go in. Do use Bramley apple rather than an eating apple because you want it to all break down um, as, as it cooks. Um, again, rather than having sort of big lumps of apple in there. And I have missed a bit there, but um, grated the lemon, just the fine zest of a lemon. Uh, just get that little patch that I've missed, so we get a lovely citrusy flavour. 
and I'm then going to squeeze the juice from the lemon. So I'll just do that. And then just stir everything together. So really very easy indeed. And I'm then going to transfer it into a, an oven proof pan. Just bring it up to a good temperature on the boiling plate and then I will stick it in the simmering oven and leave it there for about an hour. And that just allows the suet to melt, the apple to break down and the mincemeat will then be ready to pot. You want to make your mincemeat as far in advance as you can. I have left mine until November, the middle of November, and that's that's plenty of time if you're not going to use it right you know, until Christmas. Um, ideally, I would have made it perhaps a touch earlier, but I think it doesn't matter too much. As long as it's got two weeks, I would say, to mature, because we're going to put brandy in at the end. So, uh, but you can make it up to six months in advance if you so desire. Uh, but this will be absolutely fine and delicious. So there we are, stir it all together, mix all those lovely flavours. So you've got the dried vine fruits, the prunes, the Bramley apple, cinnamon, nutmeg, mixed spice, zest of lemon and the lemon juice. The mixed peel, I think that's everything. So it is a lot of ingredients, but as you can see, it really is no effort to make. So here we have the lovely mincemeat mixture, which you can probably see a little bit better now I've transferred it into this pan. This fantastic pan is one that goes into the ARG ovens as well as sitting on the top, and it has a detachable handle, which is something I find incredibly useful when cooking in the Arga ovens. It means that you can get more into the ovens because you haven't got the handles taking up any space. And it also means that when you come to take your pan out of the oven, you are not at risk of burning your hand when you go to pick up the pan because the handle hasn't been in the oven. And that is something I've done all too often with other pans of mine that don't have the detachable handles. I am going to put this over here on the boiling plate just to bring it up to a nice high heat before I put it into the simmering oven just until the suet has melted and the apple has broken down about 45 minutes an hour absolutely fine and then we can pot the mincemeat up. Now you might notice I didn't put any nuts into my mincemeat as is traditional and if you like to have nuts in your mincemeat please do add some flaked almonds they're a really good addition nicely chopped up so they're not too big. Um, I've left mine out because I'm hoping to be able to share our mince pies with uh, friends and neighbours and we do know a few people who have nut allergies so I make mine without and it's completely delicious but you can add them by all means and it's a lovely addition and adds a nice bit of nice bit of texture too. Lovely, see that is already making a good sound and it's getting really nice and hot. So that's great. I'm going to cover it with a lid and put it into the simmering oven. Just put it onto the floor of the oven like so. There we are. In it goes. And we can now leave that there, go and do other things and come back to it in an hour's time and we can pot up the mincemeat. After an hour, I took my mincemeat out of the simmering oven and here it is. It is gorgeously sticky, thick, smells of Christmas and it looks absolutely wonderful. I am just letting it cool completely before stirring through the all-important brandy which will help preserve it and also give it a lovely warming kick. Very important at Christmas. I'm just gonna set it to one side and show you um, the jars I've got here. So when it comes to potting up your mincemeat or anything else for that matter, it's really important that your jars are sterile when you put the mixture into them. To do that, I just wash mine in really hot soapy water, the lids as well, make sure that there's no smell remaining from whatever was in them before and then stick them in a roasting tin into the simmering oven for about 20 minutes. They'll dry completely and get nice and hot, perfect for potting up the mincemeat. Always put a few extra jars in because it's very hard to judge exactly how many jars you'll fill if you have got lots of different sizes like I have. I tend to collect jars 
uh, when I've finished uh, eating whatever's in them. So I'm going to put these into the simmering oven now. As I say, about 20 minutes is perfect. You can also sterilise your jars by running them through the hottest wash in your dishwasher. Uh, but I just find the argos already on and the heat is there, so you might as well use it for this purpose. So I have just been adding the brandy to my mince meat that's now completely cool. I'm just going to add a little slosh more, I think. It's Christmas after all. Mix it all in. It's quite sort of sticky now and the suet has started to solidify again. Of course, that melts when you go to cook with the mince meat. It's ready to pot up now. So I'm going to get the jars out of the simmering oven. Keep the oven gloves on when you're handling them because they will be hot straight out of the oven. I've got a spoon here which I have just had in boiling water so that the spoon is also sterile. And I'm just going to use that to put the mincemeat straight into the jars. And then I will seal tightly with a lid there's no need these days to use the wax discs and the cellophane because any modern preserve will have a, a suitable seal on the, on the lid. There we go. In it goes. Pack it nice and full. Smells of Christmas. I can't wait to use this in my mince pies. But other things too. A good dollop of mincemeat is delicious, stirred through the apples if you're making uh, an apple crumble. It's delicious in a frangipan type tart, so um, like a Bakewell tart with mincemeat on the bottom and then the almond frangipan, absolutely delicious. Um, I use it in all sorts of desserts. So I've now got to identify which is the correct lid, I think. It's that one, is that? I can just about handle that. There we go. So screw it on really firmly. And there we have it, my first jar of Christmas mincemeat. I'm going to pot up the rest now and I will hide this away until it's a bit closer to Christmas and I will look forward to using it in some delicious mince pies.